where will Jonathan Taylor end up? Right. So we've got rumors that none of the there's said to be six teams interested, right? And two have made an offer. One of them has been kind of heavily rumored that it's the Dolphins. Dolphins are one of the teams interested, and Dolphins are the one of the teams that made an offer. Uh, we talked a little bit before, briefly before air. Uh, the Bears have been interested. The Eagles have been interested. Uh, apparently, uh, the Rams, I think, uh, are rumored. The Bills, the Chiefs, all teams that basically need running backs, right? So I say all that. He's got till August 29th, five days to see to you know find a suitable trade partner for the Colts, which is very weird. Uh, I thought it was the GM's job to find the trade, um, not the player's job, but you know, whatever. Uh, I could be wrong, I guess. Where do you think Jonathan Taylor ends up, Justin? So, uh, you know, to touch on anything where you said that you thought it was the GM's job, but uh, this isn't the first time like teams do this where the agent goes out there and fielding offers trying to see what's uh the best possible fit and goes back to the team with it but best possible fit it'd be hard for me to see miami whiff on another running back losing out on dalvin cook a guy that's a miami boy uh so missing out on him and now another big running back gets on the market where you can take some pressure off of Tua's back i think miami would be the perfect fit Now, is that the fit that I want? Absolutely not. I think Buffalo should be all in on on Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor, while he's not utilized in the passing game, he can contribute in that that field, but he's an absolute horse. And and I've been talking for – now we've been doing this podcast for over a year where I've talked about the need for a big-time running back, a need for a guy to to be a bell cow and and take 25 carries. And so Josh Allen's not the one running – but Jonathan Taylor would be. And I think that will make that offense just that much more dangerous. But there's a lot of teams that you can go with. I mean, I love having fun and, and going over the options. I mean, you look at Miami, you look at Buffalo, Philadelphia is rumored to be interested, and they have DeAndre Swift and Rashad Penny already, and an insane O-line. So you add Jonathan Taylor to that, that dude's just going to be running through gaping holes all season long. So it's it's definitely an interesting one. But – my guess is going to be Miami. My hope would be Buffalo. Yeah. I mean, it, you, it's, it's a tough one to think about, right? Because there's some, like the Colts obviously probably want a first round pick. Right. And mm-hmm. I think that they are in, in their right to ask for that. The kid is 24 years old, Justin. Uh, and he doesn't turn 25 until the new year in January. It's his. This is going into his fourth season. He's had a historically great season: eighteen hundred yards, eighteen touchdowns. Will he ever reach that pinnacle again? Who knows? Did he? Did he peak that season? Was that? Was that it? I'm not saying he's not going to have another great season, but will he ever reach that pinnacle? I don't know. But I would say that this this guy is in in route to probably have a couple, if not several, thousand yard seasons uh, wherever he goes. Again, you bring up Miami, you bring up the Philadelphia Eagles, you bring up Buffalo. To me, it just it's it goes back to the thing because whoever you whoever trades for Jonathan Taylor, right, Justin, is going to have to you know pony up. They're going to have to empty the uh, the Brinks truck because that's the whole reason he's leaving the Colts is the Colts aren't willing to give him the contract extension he wants. So it just it just goes to Buffalo. Buffalo didn't get DeAndre Hopkins because they couldn't offer him the money. Uh, they didn't get Dalvin Cook. I don't know. Uh, maybe it had to do with the money. I, I don't really know what happened there. But Miami, does Miami have the money available? Because they're paying Tyree Kill. They're going to have to pay Jayla Waddle. They're going to have to pay Tua if Tua takes this massive jump and stays healthy and is this MVP candidate that so many people are are, are proclamating that this kid is, is, is the next big thing, which I, I just I don't see. Um, there's a lot of money to go around in Miami. You just brought in Jalen Ramsey. You got Xavion Howard. You got big time players that you have to pay as well. Paying Jonathan Taylor is that tough when you know Mike McDaniel comes from a system like the 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, where it doesn't matter who the running back is. 
yes, is it awesome that you can have a CMC like the Niners have now? And does he upgrade the running game? 100%. But if I can already get a very good uh, production from multiple running backs, why go out and get, you know, a big time one that's that's going to provide me that much when I'm just going to be paying one guy? So that's where I see with Miami and Philadelphia. Philadelphia don't got no money to go around. They sure as hell don't. They're paying everybody. They got Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, uh, uh, Dallas Goddard, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith is coming up. Jalen Hurst just got paid. They, they, they got no money. Darius Slay is there. They got no money. Bradbury, no money. You see, I, it, I don't know. I don't know if that's the case because I feel like, you know, with, with these NFL teams, are you, when there's a will, there's a way. I really believe that. Okay, yeah, I hear you. Man, but I just move around contracts. I hear you. There's a will there, and, and I do agree with that. It's just I don't, I, I don't see it. I don't. So if for me it, it comes to a Chicago, a Chicago comes into play because Chicago has the cap space. Chicago. Mm -hmm would be willing to pay up that money. He would fit perfectly with the Justin Fields. If you're trying to run a, dare I say, Tim Tebow S that we were talking about earlier style offense fits perfectly. So that's yeah. where I would go is Chicago probably would be the, the, a, a great fit, a great help to a young quarterback in Justin Fields. And they have the money to pay him. Yeah, so it, I mean, I understand that they have the money to pay him, but, one thing I guess what I don't like about this is Indianapolis probably has such a high price tag on Jonathan Taylor, but isn't willing to pay him like a high price tag player. So it's I, I don't know what kind of uh, return they're going to get. I read an NFL exec said a few of them uh, said like a second round pick, maybe a second and a fourth. Uh, just I didn't see anybody say a first round pick at all. So that that's going to be an interesting one. I, I can see what you mean about Chicago, I guess. For me, when I think about the Chicago Bears, and you're probably not competing for the division this year. I, I mean, at least that's what we are going into the season saying they won't. They can go out there and find themselves a bell cow of a running back eventually in the draft, as opposed to shelling out huge money to Jonathan Taylor when really, it, it, the way it seems, the running back market is – Every team would let this guy get to free agency, let him sit there for a while, watch his, his, uh, the price tag dwindle down, and Jonathan Taylor is going to see, okay, I'm not going to be able to make a certain amount of money that I expect. Until you you produce also in the receiving game the, to the likes of a CMC, even an Alvin Kamara, you can't expect to get paid like them. And, and now I guarantee we've had this conversation before that – I think it's unfair. I think running backs are a, a, a vital part of this game. But unfortunately, if your O-line is terrible, you're likely not to have a good season. That's what makes Barry Sanders, guys like Barry, so special because he could operate without that. You know, he just did made everybody miss. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at his stats right now. Rookie year, he rushed for uh, 1,169 yards and a touchdown. He caught for nearly 300. Um, second year, that was his monster season, nearly won an MVP. It was an absolute freak year. And then a year where he has some injuries, the O-line in Indianapolis isn't that great. Uh, he rushes for 861, four touchdowns. Now, granted, I think he only played 11 games that year. So he would have been on pace to rush for way more. Jonathan Taylor is an absolute monster. Whomever gets him is going to be very, very fortunate. And which is why I, I really believe any one of those contenders, like uh, I don't really see the need too much of Philadelphia, but I mean, if you're rich, go for it and uh, get richer, right? So Philadelphia would be a great fit. Buffalo would be a great fit. Or like I said, uh, what was the other team that we mentioned? Buffalo and Miami. Yeah. Two so, AFC East teams. Yeah. But, I mean, going down the list, so – of need for running backs, right? Looking at the standings here, Miami, Buffalo, New England's not going to do it. Uh, the Jets don't have a need. Pittsburgh doesn't have a need. Baltimore could do it. They don't have the cap space, and I don't think they're going to do it. Uh, Cleveland doesn't have a need. Cincinnati doesn't have a need. Jacksonville doesn't have a need. Um, Houston doesn't have a need. Tennessee doesn't have a need. 
Vegas doesn't have a need. Kansas City, they're always in contention. But again, do they have the cap space and are they willing to give up? Probably not. The Chargers, if they're not willing to pay Austin Eckler, I don't think they're going to be willing to pay Jonathan Taylor. Mm -hmm. Denver, that's an interesting one. I don't think they don't. Again, they're a team that doesn't have the cap space to do it. Um, Washington, there's another team. Washington was kind of rumored to be interested because they do, while they have solid running backs, they could be interested in that, and he could really help out Sam Howell, taking a lot of pressure off of him. The Giants don't have a need. Philadelphia, we mentioned. Dallas doesn't really have a need. They got Tony Pollard, and I don't think they're going to be willing to pay up there. They got a lot of other positions to pay up. Detroit, they just drafted a first-rounder. Chicago, I think, is the best fit. Green Bay doesn't have a need. Minnesota just got rid of Dalvin Cook. Don't think they're willing to go get another running back. Uh, New Orleans is good. Atlanta's good. Tampa, probably not. Carolina, probably not going to be interested, even though there's a need there. And then Seattle is okay. San Francisco is good. Arizona, he probably doesn't want to go there. And then the Rams, like I said. So there's teams out there. A lot of them, like I mentioned in that little uh, soliloquy I just had, don't have the cap space. So that's why I kind of say Chicago lines up uh, perfectly um, to go there. But I really believe that, like I said, if a team needs to make a move, they can make the necessary thing. So I I wouldn't even sleep on any of those big dogs that you named that were like a Baltimore. I get it. Now, their cap situation is completely different than everybody else. So there's a possibility that he's off the table for them. But, man, could you imagine that? Could you imagine Jonathan Taylor playing in the same backfield as uh, as a Lamar Jackson? But also, you look at teams like uh, not necessarily Cleveland, but a two running back head. So imagine I, I th- now it's just my mind just hoping for chaos and just envisioning things like this. But Jonathan Taylor to the Chargers, Austin Eckler is an excellent receiving back, but he quite he doesn't have that you know that punch as a running back that the Jonathan Taylors do have. So imagine a duo of that out in L.A. with the Chargers. That offense is already expected to be explosive. So if I saw that, oh, my gosh. I'd see, like, Cincinnati, Joe Mixon has some inconsistencies sometimes. So you add another guy to pack a punch. But there, there's so many teams that you could, I guess, finagle with, and you could see a fit for Jonathan Taylor. But at the moment, it's just uh, maybe even KC is a sleeper, but – like I said, I, I think Buffalo needs to pony up and go get that big dog, bro. Go get him because you're going to play in some tough climate in December. You need somebody that's going to be able to run downhill. At, at the end of the day, Tennessee has shown you they can win playoff games in the in, in the cold months. Why? Because you got a big bruiser like Derrick Henry just running over you. So you go and you add Jonathan Taylor into that, Buffalo's going to look okay. Um. You know, Denver, for me, is sleeper because that's what they're trying to do Mm -hmm. is start up that run game again and and make it easier on a Russell Wilson. Um, Yeah, we don't know what Javante Williams is going to look like. Yeah, coming off the ACL injury. So that's why I I mentioned them as well. But a lot of options out there for Jonathan Taylor. He's got five days to make a decision, Justin. But uh, moving on to 